In this video, we're going to be talking about the first three essential commands in the terminal. Now, watch this video to the end because I've got an extra shortcut for you that's going to save a lot of time. This video is actually part of a larger series on web development. In each of the main videos of this series, 1.0, 2.0, etc., I talk about the big concepts in web development and programming in a style I call Simply Explained. This is episode 1.1. It's a practice video. So if you haven't checked out episode 1.0, the terminal Simply Explained, definitely check that out. I don't think you'll just find it informative, but also entertaining. Anyway, if you're interested in web development or just computer science in general, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get weekly notifications on how you can improve your programming skills. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm coming at this as if you are brand new to any type of programming at all. So I'm only going to focus on three commands. Those commands are going to be info, list, and change directory but they're abbreviated, as you're about to see. Terminal is an application on every Mac, so to open it, I usually use Launchpad. That's the correct name for this view. I'll search for Terminal, and a command prompt is open for us. I wanna talk about what this shows. MacBook Pro, so that's the name of my computer. This tilde on a Mac, it, it represents what directory I'm in, and tilde represents the home directory. B knuckles, that's me, I'm the user, and this dollar sign is my command prompt. I can enter anything I want after that. So I'm gonna start with info, which the purpose of is probably pretty clear. I want info on the next command I'm going to use, which is ls. Now there's a lot of text here, but we only need to focus on a few pieces of information. The first is the name, ls. It lists directory contents. A directory is the same thing as a folder. Synopsis, ls. Now, right here, these are the arguments for this command. And since I'm assuming no prior programming knowledge, let me talk a little bit about what arguments are. If I give you a command, if I say stop, you probably have a default behavior. You'll just stop maybe everything. If I say, stop singing, stop singing. That's a little bit more specific. If I said, stop singing eventually, well, that's a little bit of a weaker command, isn't it? But nevertheless, I've given you more specific information about how I want you to stop. Stop singing eventually. Each of those pieces of information in programming language would be called an argument. So one of the arguments is singing, and the other argument is eventually. There are two arguments for ls. Granted, one of the arguments has uh, several parts to it. The first argument is the options, and then there are all of these little optional options. There's almost one for every letter of the alphabet, it looks like. And down below, we can see what they mean. So I'm not going to read into them, but for each of those letters, there's a summary of what that means. And I can use some of them or, or all of them. The next one is another argument, and it's simply to specify the file. I'm going to exit out of info and test this out. So what I'd like to do, since I'm in my home directory, I wanna see what files are in my home directory. I'm just gonna type ls. If I don't give any arguments at all, there's a default behavior. It's just going to list the directories in my current working directory, which is my home directory. Take a look. 3D prints, applications, Carthage, desktop, yada, yada. Now, over on the side here, I've got my finder open. I'm in my home directory, bnockles, and you can see these files. 3D prints, applications, bin, Carthage, yada, yada. So we can see the similarity between what I got here and what I got in the finder. Now I'm going to try adding one of those arguments. I'll do list, and I'm gonna do dash A. Now dash A is going to show all of the files. What do I mean by all of them? Well, let's see. There's quite a few more and many of them begin with a period. I wanna show you what that period means, and to show you, I'm going to try to create a file. We'll do it the traditional way, where I create it in Finder. And I'm gonna call this file dot sum folder. 
with a period in the front. Let's try that out. You can't use a name that begins with a dot because these names are reserved for the system. Please choose another name. Isn't that interesting? So when I look at all of the files in here, what I'm seeing are system files, hidden files that I don't see in the finder. Let me get rid of that untitled folder. What if I want to see the files inside of a folder? Well, I'm going to type ls, and I'm not going to do a dash a like last time. I'm not going to do a dash anything. I'm just going to type movies because what I'd like to know is what's inside of this directory. And really quick, if I go back to info ls, you can see if I type a dash, I can enter any of these uh, options. And if I don't do it, I can just type in a file. So that's what I'm doing right now. In, or, oops, ls movies. What's inside my movies folder? Let's see if we can confirm this over in the, in the finder. I open movies, and here are all my files. And these files happen to be the names of all of my YouTube videos and a few other graphics and things like that. Let's go into that folder. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my directory. You can see over here, I'm in my home directory. I want to go into my movies directory. So I'll go cd to change my directory, and I'll type movies. And when I do that, take a look at how my uh, command line has changed. It says movies now when it used to show a tilde. By the way, if you're getting overwhelmed with text, I said it was only going to do three commands, but I'm going to th throw in clear so I can uh, minimize how much text is on there, and I'll do that one more time. You can see I'm inside the movies directory. So now when I type ls, I'm not going to see uh, 3D prints and movies and documents and all of the things that were in my home directory because my frame of reference has changed. I'm now inside of a folder. I type ls and I get the contents of the movies folder. What if I want to go back to my home directory? Well, there are other arguments for ls. I can do ls dot dot. ls dot dot means go back to the parent directory. I am now, oh, oops, my mistake. ls doesn't mean go back to the parent directory. Uh, change directory means go back to the parent directory. What I did, ls, that means list. So I listed the contents in the parent directory. I'm still in movies. I want to be in my home directory. So I'll do cd dot dot. Now it says I'm inside of my home directory. Okay, so we'll practice that very quickly. We'll do change directory, go into movies, change directory dot dot, go back to the home directory. What if I go into movies, and in movies, I go into the file called terminal, cd terminal. And now what if I want to go back to the home directory? Well, one way I can do it is I can do cd dot dot like I did before, or I can always use that tilde as a shortcut. So if I do cd tilde, now I'm back in my home directory. Here's another thing I want to show you. Let's suppose I want to go back into the terminal directory. And again, terminal, that's the name of this YouTube video. Uh, that's what it means inside the movie directory. Uh, movies, CD terminal, and what if I spell terminal incorrectly? Well, it's going to say that there is no file or directory. It doesn't exist. So that means I have to type it again. But you don't always have to type things the same way over and over again. There's a shortcut. If you use the up arrow, you can go through the history of everything you've ever typed. So if I want to edit what I just typed in, instead of EL, I'll end with AL, I can easily change a command that I entered incorrectly. I can even do better than that. I'm going to go back 
to the movies directory. Oops. And you know what? Let's clear again. So I'm in movies. If I do CD T and I press the tab key on my keyboard. Now when I press that, I don't know if you heard it, but I got a little eep from my computer because there is, well, because there's more than one directory called or that starts with a T. If I press tab again, I can see them all. I have a directory called TV, one called terminal, one called tire repair, taxes, Tesla. There's so many options. So I want the one that goes terminal. So I'll do CD, T-E-R. Oops, T-E-R, tab. And now I get autocomplete. So if you have a distinct directory name and you want to jump to it, you can start to type the beginning of that name and then press tab to jump there. I want to show you one more thing. Let's go back to the movies directory. I'll list my files. And you see I have a video called Escaped Death. If I type that, CD Escaped, oops, CD Escaped Death, it says escaped. No such file or directory. Escaped. I didn't type escaped. I typed escaped death. Here it says escape doesn't exist. Well, that's because there's a space. If you've got a space, you can do this more than one way, actually. I can type CD, ES, and I type tab. You'll notice it automatically uh, inserts a backslash. A backslash is an escape character. It's a way of entering text that has another meaning. So for example, a space is how you separate your arguments. But if I want a space in the name of my file, I can use a backslash to say death is not another argument. Death is, is, is actually separated by a space. It's part of the same title. So that's one way. But if you don't like that, you can also do CD quote, escaped death, end quote. And using the quotation marks, it knows that you mean exactly that name, including the spaces. Just keep that in mind, that whenever you're using spaces, you either want to escape them, use a backslash, or put the title in quotes. All right, like I promised in the beginning, I've got one more thing for you. It's a shortcut. It saves a lot of time, and I use it every single day. I'm going to use it in every future episode. So I have to teach it to you. The environment that we're entering these commands into, the language that we're using, is called BASH. That's an acronym. It stands for Born Again Shell. And if you watched episode 1.0, you already know what shell means. Anyway, BASH is what's running in the terminal. And when you use BASH, you have a settings profile. What I'm going to do is make some changes to that profile. I'm going to add what's called an alias. Let me show you what I mean. Think about how we navigated to the directory terminal inside of my movies folder. I had to go CD movies and then CD terminal and type out the name each time. Now I could use the shortcut like the tab key, but let's suppose I needed to navigate through several layers of directories. It would take me a while to type CD file name, CD file name to get all the way to the end. An alias is a shortcut that you write that you can enter at any time to navigate to a frequently used file. In fact, an alias can be used for any frequently used command. So to do that, I need to edit my bash profile. I'm going to go to my home directory and we'll list all the files there. On the left here, you can see I've got one file called uh, bash profile and I'm going to open that. And to open it, I'm going to use a new command. It's called open, and I bet you can guess what that does. So open.bash profile. Now that's going to open the file in text edit, and you can see that this file already has some stuff inside of it already. Uh, what I'm going to do is add an alias for navigating to that terminal folder. So I'm going to type alias, and since I want a shortcut to navigate to the terminal, directory, I'm going to call it T-E-R, short for terminal, and very easy to type. And T-E-R represents, in quotes now, CD, tilde, that's the home directory, slash, movies, 
slash terminal slash end quote. And I'm going to save that and quit out of text edit. And you can see that if I write T-E-R, which is the alias I just typed, it's going to say it's not found. That's okay. It's because I've just added this setting. What I need to do is I need to open a new instance of the terminal. You can do that with Command N, or you can just say uh, New Window. And I'm now going to type T-E-R. And what I'd like you to watch for is the directory, my current working directory. So I type T-E-R. And just like that, I'm in the terminal. So in this case, two levels down, didn't really save me a lot of time, but you can imagine for directories that are harder to find, an alias, just quick three letters and immediately enter the command, that can save you a lot of time. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. From here, we're going to go on to lesson 2.0, which is about Git and GitHub. And in the practice lessons for that video, we're going to use the command line to interact with that program. Don't forget to press the thumbs up button. And if you want, you can follow me on Twitter at NeverBeenBetter or my blog at NeverBeenBetter.com. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.